in my new quest to discover why seams exist within Blender. You know, one of those things that, you know, really bugs an artist to find out why things are. There's got to be a button or a check mark or something like that within Blender to correct the issue. My research has discovered margin. Okay. But now margin works like this. If your UV shell is too close to the edge and then bleeds onto another UV shell, you get errors. So you have to have space between your UV shells. And still then, you receive some kind of problems. But if you lower it down to the lowest common test, and I'll show you that here in a second, it works quite well. So we'll treat this as a very complex scenario in the fact that I'm baking high detail into a low mesh. And I'll show you the results based upon that. Let's just put the margin to one. Okay, here's the results before with the margin set to zero. And these are the results for margin set to one. As you can see, it failed. And I believe it failed because of the fact that it ran out of space to margin them. What I also found is across my testing, which is pretty interesting, is the fact that if I go to change it back to zero and then rebake it, it will crash Blender every time. Results do not vary. But what I did do is load it up into Maya just to check to see how the seams actually looked and you can see they are quite bad. Uh, this is one I fixed a little bit. But you can see fixing it makes the bolt go away because you're moving the UVs. So you have to be very careful upon placing detail on the seam. The seams don't look that bad in a third party application, but you do have to scooch them around a little bit. As I did in unit in the last unit. Okay, I also want to show you this. Let's say it's not a complex scenario. Okay, here is what I did. I set up a little test. And this is what I, I really urge students to do. I mean, you know, this is this is the stuff. If something bothers you, um, why don't you test it out in very small scenarios to see if you can repair the problem? So here's what I have. This, at a higher level, has detail in it, right? Now, I put a seam right smack down in the middle of this thing, and I generated some UVs for it. And in this case, the UV shells are touching. Okay, very close together, absolutely close together. So, will it produce um, the same results? Will it, it will it crash out because of that? Well, I'll let you know that here, my margins are set to 15, and when I bake upon multi-res, clear it, bake it, you can see how fast that goes. The two shells run into each other, but they do not produce bad results. Then you can see the seam actually kind of goes away. So I'll just uh, save this image, then go back over here, 
and make sure that you know that that is the same map. Okay, seems not as bad. Now let's lower it down. Let's put a margin of one in there. Bake it out. Save image. And let's go back over to our test subject. Go back to texture and reload it. There it is. Now the seam is quite bad. So margin works in some cases. In other cases, you're going to receive some errors. But at least you know now know what margin does. It technically takes and overpaints your normal map and any map for that matter. I've noticed that every single bake in here, like if I bake on ambient occlusion or anything else, let's say occlusion, it has that margin in there. So what I would do is if you're baking any other maps along with your normal map, make sure your margins match or things won't line up. So. Another thing I haven't tried, and I'm going to try it with you now, is the fact that when I move the UVs around to um, increase the resolution on some of these shells, I did that by hand. The other one I just unwrapped. So let's do that. Let's go in here and finish out the experiment live. Wouldn't that be great? Okay, so edit. A, U, unwrap. I'm going to leave the UVs alone this time. I'm not going to move the shells along. Okay, so just leaving them. Notice how much wasted space there are, though. See, tons of wasted space for those UVs. Then I'm going to go back into object mode. I'm going to put the margin up to 1. I'm going to save this as uh, Helmet 2. That way if it crashes, I can go back to an experiment. All right, here we go. Let's see if it works. So we got Helmet High, hold Shift, go to Helmet Low, and Bake. And Pray. Interesting. I'd never quite seen a normal map with inverted colors before. So I guess I answered my question as uh, it works well. Margins work great on low type of experiments. Like, the, um, in other words, two polygons put together, good to go. Probably even a little bit higher than that as far as that goes. But anytime you're baking across several objects, you're going to have to lower it down to margins of zero and then manually scoot some UVs around. I preferred my UVs the way they were only because they support a higher quality normal map. So instead of margins, I'm going to have to manually scoot things around. But one thing that you have to know is I'm not going to do that until I bake all the maps. In other words, if I want an ambient occlusion map, I'm going to do the ambient occlusion. I'm going to do all the texturing, all everything. And at the very end, will I move the UVs just a little bit in, like by a microbe, just to compensate for the seam. All right, so that's experimentations with Jason. I hope you enjoyed the program, and I hope that helps you with your seams, whether you're using margin or no margin. Enjoy.